Hey everyone, I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash, and today we're going to talk about stash organization. As a sweater knitter, I have a lot of yarn left over at the end of my projects, and thus far what I tend to do is stuff it in my sweater scrap yarn bin. Well, that bin can get pretty full pretty fast, and it can get very disorganized. So that's the first bin we're going to tackle in this video, how to organize your sweater leftovers. I have five tips that are going to help you keep your stash organized and get more of that yarn back into circulation. Okay, so I've pulled out my sweater scrap yarn bin. You might have a bin like this full of scrap yarn from a lot of different kinds of projects. Mine are usually sweaters, uh, and that means they're bigger projects, so that usually means there's more yarn left over. And I think we need to dig into tip number one for how to organize <laughs> these larger scraps of yarn that you might have. Number one, you gotta think, what's your purpose? So for me, my purpose in keeping this sweater yarn bin is to have yarn so that I can mend my sweaters or modify them later. So the first two uh, cakes of yarn that are right at the top here, these two are from two of my favorite cardigans, uh, and I use these to mend my cardigans all the time. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons they're at the top of the stash. Now, the other reason that I keep this stash, like I said, is modification. So occasionally I'll have a sweater where I want to add length to it, I need to change a sleeve, something like that. And in those cases, it sure is nice to have a little bit of extra yarn, not just a few scraps around. So you got to think about what your purpose is in keeping this collection of yarn. Now, once you know what your purpose is, usually the next step is to bag it or tag it. <laughs> Make sure that you know what you actually have in your stash. So for example, I have this group of uh, Brooklyn Tweed yarns over here. This is all loft yarn that came from uh, a sweater project and you can see the tags are embedded in the cakes of yarn. That is a huge tip and I will show you here if your cake of yarn when you're done knitting seems a little bit too tight to jam your tag in the middle there, all you have to do is Put it back through your ball winder and once it's through the ball winder uh, as you pull it off the ball winder that's the moment when you can tuck that tag up and stick it inside the ball as you're pulling the ball off the ball winder and then you'll end up with uh, cakes of yarn that look like this they have their tag nicely embedded in the center and you can keep track of what's going on there but if you want to bag it instead that's another route to go. Uh, maybe you have, uh, you bought some minis in a plastic case or something like that, paper case. Uh, you can keep your minis right, leftovers right inside that case. That'll keep it marked. That's kind of like bagging it. Or you can group like with like. So this was a sweater project that had a lot of different uh, colors of lopy yarn in it. Uh, it was a beautiful color work sweater. And so I put all of the leftover lopy yarn in a single bag so that I know which project is for. If you wanted to, you could even use that label on the bag to write the project or the style of yarn that's in here. I know this is lopy. So at the very least, I had that in a bag. Now, when I get to projects like this one, this was from a sweater that I made out of my own Shorn 4 yarn, and you can see that I have some labels <laughs> on this one cake, but I happen to know that these other scrappy bits are also Shorn yarn. So instead of allowing these scraps to kind of flounder in this bin by themselves and maybe get lost over the years, I'm gonna grab myself a little quart plastic bag put the unmarked scraps at the bottom and put the scrap with the tag at the top. And that way I know exactly what I'm getting when I look at this bag and I know that all this yarn is the same. Now, this is especially true if you have a lot of gray yarn in your stash. So for example, here I have another gray yarn. There's more gray over here. <laughs> There's more gray buried down here. And if they don't all have tags in them, it can get pretty hard to distinguish uh, years after year after year when you're working on projects. Now my third tip for you is to keep smaller quantities instead of full skeins. Now, I have been known to find full skeins in my yarn stash bin here. And you can see right here on top, I have a good example. This was a sweater that I made for my mom. And uh, the yarn here that I have is way more than I might ever need to repair her sweater. It was a very large, long cardigan. Uh, and this yarn is probably way more than I would ever need. So what I should probably be doing is keeping this smaller piece of yarn right here, or maybe even both of these, which I've tied together. And then this full skein, I think it comes out of the sweater scrap bin and goes back into the normal stash. 
Now, if you are keeping smaller quantities of yarn, I got a couple recommendations for you. So these, let's for a look at these, uh, this little pile over here, for example. I have some Manitoto wool. I do have a tag for it, but it's balled up rather than caked up. So again, you could make it into a cake and stuff the tag inside, or you can slide the tag over, fold it over like this, grab a piece of tape, put a little tape on there, and then it will stay uh, in its tag a little bit more easily. Uh, you can do the same thing with a rubber band. Here I have a tiny piece of loft left in the ball form and I've just popped a rubber band around the tag folding it over slightly and that way these things are going to stay with their tag. The next thing to do, again we're back to bag it and tag it, put those small scraps together in a larger bag and that way if you lose a tag or you're not sure of you know one particular yarn at the very least, you have fewer yarns to choose from. You know that the tag is probably in the bag with the yarn, so it's easier to figure that out uh, after you've <laughs> left things in your stash for a long period of time. Tip number four, know when to de-stash it. I know that I've come back to this yarn bin over and over again and found things in here for sweaters that I've either given away, gifted, or they've just disappeared from my collection of sweaters one way or the other, right? So for example, this yarn at the top, not only do we have a full skein here, <laughs> which violates rule number three, try not to keep full skeins in your scrap box, right? And in fact, I don't even have this sweater anymore. <laughs> I gave it away, and so this yarn actually does me no good in the sweater bin. It should go back into circulation. So know when to de-stash it. Here's another example. This is a beautiful possum blend yarn. I made a baby sweater for a friend out of this, gave it away, and somehow the rest of the yarn ended up in my scrap bin for sweaters instead of going back into circulation so that I could use it for something else. So tip number five, when you're going through your yarn bin, ask yourself if some of that yarn could be put back into circulation for smaller projects. Now you'll remember that I mentioned this sweater that I used a lot of different colors of Brooklyn Tweed Loft for. I have all this extra yarn left over. Well, I've been known to take the yarn left over from Colorwork sweaters and make some accessories out of that same yarn, maybe even in the same pattern as the sweater yoke. Uh, so for example, with this one, you could make a beautiful cowl or a hat or a set of mitts, and you'd probably still have quite a bit of yarn left over, at least enough scrap, to put back in the sweater bin in case you ever needed to repair the actual sweater. So those are my five tips for organizing your sweater scrap yarn bin. Make sure it's bagged, tagged, ready to go for all of your mending and modification projects and nothing more. I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for hanging out. Bye-bye.